I spoke to independent peer Lord Ian Austin, who left the Labour Party in 2019 over its anti-Semitism crisis. I began by asking him about the leading candidates for Rochdale, respectively Mr Ali and George Galloway. Well, it's a really... I mean, who'd have thought you'd have been in, in this position? I think... Look, I think there are no circumstances under which anybody should ever vote for George Galloway. I think he's, you know, he's a veteran, troublemaker, uh, an extremist. He got kicked out of the Labour Party 20 years ago um, by, by, you know, by Tony Blair. He's been in, involved in all sorts of controversies. He said the collapse of the Soviet Union was the biggest catastrophe of his, uh, of his lifetime. So I think there are no circumstances under which anybody should ever vote for him. But obviously Labour's found themselves in huge difficulties as well. So pity the poor people of Rochdale. I mean, some on the sort of left analysis side of things are saying that if Azhar Ali had been a more left-leaning candidate, he would have been pushed aside and sanctioned, but it's more that he falls towards the centre of the party is the reason they're protecting him. Do you buy that? I don't accept that at all. I think that if he'd been... Uh, look, if he'd been... If this had come out before nominations closed, I'm sure he wouldn't have lasted three seconds. The problem the Labour Party's got, of course, is that nominations have closed, his name's on a ballot paper, and that's presenting them with a, you know, with a huge dilemma and a really difficult situation. And I've run... Look, I've run loads of by-elections over my time for that when I was a member of the Labour Party. Um, you know, these are circumstances I have never seen. I have never seen. I, I mean, I wouldn't work for the guy and I wouldn't campaign for him, but I do understand the, the dilemma they're in. Regarding the statements Azhar Ali made, he said in his uh, apology that, or at least the party have said, the Labour Party, that he fell for an online conspiracy theory. Your reaction to that? I mean, look, there's no... There's no justification. There's no... I mean, it's not a proper apology. There's no justification for saying things like that. It's complete... It's, look, it's, uh, it's a complete disgrace. Uh, look, I think, it, I think this whole sorry affair raises some really serious questions. Why, why are elections in the UK being dominated by a conflict 3,000 miles away? There are 200 land-based conflicts in the world, but people only ever talk about one of them. Mm. No-one's campaigning about a million Muslims locked up in concentration camps in China. No-one's campaigning about half a million Muslims killed in Syria or Yemen, the world's biggest humanitarian catastrophe. Everybody's obsessed with this one conflict. I'm not saying it's not an issue. Of course, it's an important issue. But it certainly shouldn't be dominating an election here in the UK. Why are we having sort of racists and extremists mm. dominating the streets of London every weekend? Completely unacceptable. I think we've got to get to a point where, you know, the Labour Party, which has always prided itself as the home, the political home for the Muslim community, I think it's got to show leadership. Mm. It's got to give the vast majority mainstream, decent Muslims who are just as appalled by extremism and racism as anybody else, mm. it's got to give them some confidence to stand... You know, they've got to take on the extremists and they've got to give ordinary, decent, ma mainstream Muslims the strength and the confidence to do that as well. And that's, a, and, and that's why this is such a huge... I mean, that's, that's why this is an even bigger catastrophe. I think you raise a really interesting point there about why this conflict is being electioned on and campaigned on, uh, over and above, say, domestic issues in this country as well. Um, I just want to push you a little bit harder on that. Why do you think there are this, this, there is this level of extremism in this country when it comes to our politics at the moment? Look, if... Um, I'm not saying... Look, if, if you're parading through London chanting support for terrorism or praising the Houthis, or supporting Hamas, don't tell me you're not an extremist. I'm not saying everybody on those marches is a racist, of course not. No doubt some of them mean well. But if the only country you protest against and the only country you want to see abolished just happens to be the world's only Jewish one, don't tell me you're not a racist. Now, that was very much the wording in the um, op-ed, the piece you put out in the Mail Online today about this and obviously broadly you've been speaking a lot over the past few months and over your career about anti-semitism mm -hmm. how bad do you think it is in the uk right now look i think it is i think it's really shocking i think it's really shocking you know I, when jewish mums tell me their kids are having to cover up religious symbols when they're traveling to school i met a group of jewish students university students last week in parliament 
heartbreaking stories about the way that they're being targeted on campus. Uh, shops have been attacked. A couple of weeks ago, a guy with a knife attacking people at a Jewish deli in, in, in North London. Synagogues have been, have been attacked. Uh, I think it is unimaginable. I mean, you would never have thought this would be possible in Britain. And I think what's got to happen... The point I was making earlier, mainstream politicians have got to stand up against this. We cannot have racism and extremism running rife in Britain. This by-election should have been an opportunity for the Labour Party to take on Galloway, to explain to the Muslim community that Galloway doesn't represent them, that the Labour Party does. But we've, we, you know, we've got to start standing up to this. And you feel they haven't on this occasion? I think the, you know, the revelations about Councillor Ali have uh, clearly made that pretty difficult, haven't they? Lord Ian Austin, independent peer, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, a reminder now of the full candidates listed for that Rochdale by-election, as are Ali for the Labour Party, independent candidate Mark Coleman, Simon Danshuk for Reform UK, Ian Donaldson for the Liberal Democrats, Paul Ellison for the Conservative Party, George Galloway for the Workers' Party of Britain, independent candidate Michael Howarth, independent candidate Willem Howarth, Guy Ottin for the Green Party, Raven Subortner for the official Monster Raving Lunar Party, and independent candidate David Tully.